Morning guys, my name's Ash and welcome back to Custodian Data Center's YouTube channel and another installment of a day in the life of a data center. Today I'm going to be walking you through what we do on a monthly basis which is a full load test of our data center. We put it all onto gens, we take it all off of mains across all our data floors to ensure everything runs as we expect. I'm going to put one of the generators in each of our generator farms into manual mode so we can ensure that the other generators work without it and that generator that's in manual mode alternates each month. We'll run these up, I'm going to show you the inside of the generators, generator number two just over there. So stay tuned, roll the intro. Okay, so we're still outside generator number two, guys. I'm gonna be disabling this by the means of an emergency stop. What this is gonna allow us to do is ensure that everything still runs as normal, even if we're down a generator. So I'm gonna show you the panel. I'm gonna emergency stop it at the panel, and then I'm gonna show you inside and give you a rundown of what's going on behind the scenes. So if you wanna come this way. So this is inside one of the generators. So this is where we control it all and where all the brains make everything work so i'm just going to emergency stop it and it will go into alarm and it will say shut down on the screen just here so there's no way this will start up unless i come out and follow a complex procedure to get it out of emergency stop mode and um, the reason we do this is purely so that i know that if say someone's working on it they're not going to be affected by a potential sudden generator start by means of mains failure so if we come over to this door This is our V10 17 litre engine with a half a megawatt output. Half a megawatt is a substantial amount of power. Um, so we, we have this across all of our generators for all the data floors. Um, on top of this, we also have four hour SLAs to get it fixed should something go wrong. And that's four hour to fix, not four hour to engineer. So within four hours, someone's here and it's fixed and it's working. Um, we've also got a two hour contract to get an emergency generator here should we need it. So someone will turn up, drop a generator in the car park and we would run cables between the generator and a box on the wall and it's just plugging it in. You, you literally push them in holes. It's not, it's not anything like electrical wiring, wiring up to distribution boards, etc. It's literally plug and play. So generator gets dropped, wires get run, we plug it into a box on the wall and we've got backup power should we ever need it. But things will have to be going absolutely terrible for that to happen. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go start these up by means of putting it into a gen test. So I'm gonna quickly shut these doors and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna go into ATS room five first. So here we are outside ATS five and we've got one of the UPSs beside me here. I'm gonna flick this key just down here and I've got it in normal operation at the moment. When I flick it, it's going to simulate a mains failure. So it's going to basically turn off the mains and magic's going to happen. The gens will start up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but we'll overlay the generators starting when this video, um, when it all switches. So I'm just going to radio up to the knock to confirm that I'm all okay to proceed because I don't want to proceed if there's something going on that I'm not aware of. James, you're receiving. Are we all good to do ATS-5? So what James is doing right now is he'll be opening up all the various monitoring systems to make sure that everything is A, ready, and B, that when it all changes that there's no alarms. Okay, perfect. Flicking ATS-5 over in about 30 seconds. So what he's monitoring for is he's monitoring to make sure that the load does transfer over to the generator, that the generator starts, because what this does when the mains fails, it sends a signal to the to the um, generator and say, look, I've run out of mains, start up. Generators will start, they'll send a signal back saying, yep, ready, and then the load will move over. So it, it gets loud, and even though I know what's gonna happen, it still makes me jump. So I'm just gonna flick this key here, and it's gonna simulate a mains failure. Okay, so that green light that you've just seen appear is saying that the generator is on and providing power. So that first bang you also heard was the mains incomer disengaging. 
So now we're running off UPS, and in a second the generator incomer will engage, and then this will turn off, well not turn off, but it will stop supplying the load to the data center. What will happen is everything will just switch on to gen. So any second now that one's gonna go bang, just like that one did. Different ATSs react in different ways. This one takes about 45 seconds to a minute. So it'll run off UPS in that time. And what it does, oh Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, so now, as we can see here, we're starting to get values. So this is the generator input to the ATS. You may have heard in the background just now, the UPS disengaged, and now the UPS is disengaged. Everything is moving over to generator. So we can see the load transferring across. Um, the UPS has come back to normal. There's no load on the generator. Okay, thank you. Yep, so generator input is there. I've got no mains input because basically the mains comes in here and feeds a data floor and this is just a massive breaker. So the breaker is now open so the no power can go through. This one is now gone from open to closed so the generator is coming into the ATS and then it's feeding the data center. So I'm just going to check the UPS is all okay and happy. Yep, so we're at normal operation, that's perfect. So I'm going to go do the, the other ATS next door, ATS 6. So ATS 6, one of the other ATS rooms. Now, in the last um, snippet, in the last ATS room, you'd have seen a different display here. So we'll put a little picture up here of a screenshot of what it looked like in there. But effectively, this wasn't lit. The reason this is lit now is because this is getting the signal from the generator saying, yep, generator, I'm online. So, that's basically saying the generator is running and ready to provide power. And it's showing that because we've switched that one over. So I'm now going to do the same here. Okay, I'm going to do ATS6 now. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Sorry, was that yes or not yet? Sorry, right, yes. Thank you. Switching ATS6 now. So, same again, I'm just going to turn the key to simulate a mains problem and we're just going to let it do its thing. Okay, so now the main ACB, which is uh, this one. Oh, every time. Um, so now that's good. This, this may switch over a little quicker actually because the generator's already online, but we'll, we'll see. So I'm just checking the UPS because it is beeping. Basically, it's telling me that it's on battery and it beeps when it's on battery because it shouldn't be on battery. Um, it should have a mains input, either generator or the national grid. So this one will switch again in a sec. And it's all running off the UPS at present. And this does one feed to a customer's rack. But it's, it's not gone off. The customer's rack is still online. Everything is still running as normal. If it wasn't, we'd be in pitch black. And the cool thing about these breakers are that if the mechanical side of it fails, i.e. it doesn't do it on its own, the little black lever to the side, just there. Oh! It's a it's a manual prime effectively, so you pump it and it basically builds up a spring and then when it gets to a certain point that spring releases and it closes it. Okay, so I'm just going to check this once more because I've heard it just switch back. I'm seeing that the batteries are now off, that it's getting AC input from the mains and the reason the battery light is still amber is purely because the batteries aren't at 100% um, charge. So just here, um, you can't really see it you might see it, but there's a little, basically a progress bar, and it's just flashing on that last bar, so the batteries, there's, I think there's 10 bars, but it's just between 90 and 100% charge on the batteries. Okay, so now I've done ATS five and six, I'm now gonna go to ATS room one and two and do all the other ATSs, get DF1 running off generators, and then I'll show you what we do in the knock. Let's, uh, let's go. Okay guys, so back outside, generators one, two, and three, as you might be able to hear on the mic, they've actually started up. We've switched all of the data centers over to generator power. So we're going to run them off generator for about four hours so we can make sure, A, our refueling systems go and do what they need to do when, when they need to do it. 
that we get any alerts for when the fuel level is low, if we have any abnormalities in power. Um, yeah, we, we'll just kind of monitor it for the next four hours, make sure everything is okay, and then we'll switch it all back to mains, um, which is literally the reverse of what I've just done, so we won't record that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go and take a look in the knock real quick to see how the knock changes when we do a gen test, because we've got a different set of graphs, a different set of monitoring metrics to kind of watch over when we do these tests that show specific stuff to gens because we don't need to see the main stuff because we're not running off mains. We need to see what voltages and frequencies and amps and yada 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 is going on with the gens. So we'll head up to NOC, we'll take a look and yeah, we'll go and see what happens. Okay, so up in the NOC we actually change a load of parameters on our monitoring systems to reflect the values that are being given off by the generators, uh, the input of the ATS from the generators, etc. So this top screen here is our power and cooling monitoring. Um, we actually switch, switch it to a different preset that shows generator graphs and basically anything, we'll, anything we might need for a gen test. So here I've got the temperatures of the gens, so it's like the coolant levels, I've got fuel levels, kilowatt, like output comparison between the, the different generators because if you've got one generator that's outputting more power then they're not properly balanced. Um, we've also got little things like the when it eventually changes. So we've got the input voltages to the ATS so this this would have been from the mains and then when we've done the test which was here you would have seen it change because the generators give off a pretty much stable 230 um, volts whereas the grid fluctuates between 240 and 248 um, so it, it just kind of shows stuff that might need our attention um, and we also monitor our generators so we can see which ones are on which ones are not on so up here we can also see that we've got gen 1 and 3 are on and they're in auto mode and gen 2 that I put in manual and gen 15 I put in manual are off which is why they're blue um, yeah it, it's just a nicer way of us visually seeing the, the generators so I can jump up and just have a quick look around. Okay so guys thanks for watching the video um, we've finished the gen test for today we're going to leave them running for another couple of hours before we switch everything back to mains um, and I also need to go and refuel one of the generators um, it's been great having you follow me along remember we're always getting new videos out on quite a regular basis now so if you've got any ideas any suggestions for what we should do next just drop it in the comments below remember to subscribe like share and we'll see you in the next video